This is the Spring Championship of Online Poker 2014 highlight show. Welcome to another amazing Scoop High tournament. This one is the $2,100 No Limit Holder with a million dollar guarantee. As has been happening all series, that got blown apart. The total prize pool for this one, just under 1.9 million, 949, including some of the toughest runners anywhere for an MTT lined up. These nine fought their way through. If you follow online poker and the tournament scene, you're going to recognize several names. We'll introduce them as we go along. Ben CB789 from Germany, the big chip leader, as we start proceedings. 2.7 million. As you can see from the blinds, that is what is technically known as a metric ton of chips. 10,000, 20,000 blinds. So Ben CB sitting on well over 100 big blinds. I think we're going to see some amazing poker. In this one, we really have got a pedigree lineup at this final table. We'll start with a three bet. It comes from Alex987. I think we're going to see a lot of three betting at this final table. And uh, probably some four betting here. I'm not going to attempt that screen name. If you are going to just fall face forward onto your keyboard and that's going to be your screen name, you know, that's not planning for greatness, is it? No one's ever going to be able to announce you. HDJ will go with from Germany. It's going to shove here and get it in against Alex 987's nines. Obviously a great spot for the Kings. When we show you graphics and uh, whole card odds and stuff like that, they do take account of folded cards. So that's the actual chances of them winning the hand. It was only 15%, but it might come in for Alex 987. He catches a beautiful nine for him, a desperate card for HDJ. And that's the way it goes. HDJ leaves us with uh, a silly screen name, but a great performance in the tournament. Ninth place for the German player, $24,294 for him. And he leaves us eight-handed. And we're into the 17 and a half, 35,000 blind level. And to those of you that wrote in, yes, I have been working on my 35 times table to do a better job of bringing you comprehensive coverage of this blind level during the scoop. Doesn't really exist very often, does it, if we're all being honest. Alex987 is going to open this up to 70,000. He's a Russian player. He's got uh, 12 caches of uh, five figures or more in online tourney. So like most of the lineup you're looking at, a really seasoned tournament pro. He's been three bet by an even more seasoneder one. That is a real word. Ras A86 has uh, 30 five-figure caches online. He's also a Sunday Million winner and uh, a ton of impressive credits on his tournament CV. And one of the ways you get that is by timing a three-bet with King-9 suited, as Raz A does right there. He's up to 1.3 million. On we go. Hand 114. Lots of jousting in the early stages, but no massively significant pots. Um, if you watch the Sunday Million with us a lot, you'll be used to, well, final tables can be over by now. It doesn't happen so much in the scoop. Obviously, that really deep structure. I hope you've been able to play an event. Of course, the beauty of the Spring Championship of Online Poker is the three buy-in levels, uh, low, medium, and high. This is obviously a high buy-in tournament, but you can get involved in the lows and the mediums, which are amazing tournaments. Some of the numbers involved. We had 70,000 for one of the low buying events recently. It is uh, my favourite online poker series of the year, and you can satellite in 24-7 for next to no or actually no money if you're lucky enough to satellite through. Ben CB defending very wide here. With the flush draw, he's got the confidence in his own ability to play the Jack-4 suited out of position. File me under not having the confidence in my own ability to play the jack four suited out of position. Don't know where you'd like to be filed listening to this, but well done you if you can uh, pull this one off. Tiratika with the sevens has uh, bet once. And is contemplating doing it again. 340,000 in the middle. About twice the pot. And Turretika's stack and a little bit of pot control on the turn here. And an ace on the river. Now, Ben CB will know he has to bluff to win his hand, but does he think he can get a bluff through? Maybe he'd rather just bluff and find out whether or not he can get a bluff through. Turretika 
has to make the decision here. Does fall quite quickly on that ace river. Don't think Ben CB has too many aces in his range, having just flat called pre-flop. Uh, but Turatika was a believer. And I guess that's how you play jack four suited out of position and make money. Nice stuff from Ben CB, who's up over the three million chip mark. Uh, that really is a ton of chips looking around the table. He uh, has this one by the throat at the moment. Now, this is no limit hold'em. And as we know, lots of things can go wrong, but he's in a great position right now. Flatting here in hand 116. DJK123, who I haven't mentioned yet, but I'm sure the more observant among you will be familiar with one of the best tournament players in the world, Dan Kelly, here going after his third scoop title to go along with four W Coop wins. Just imagine that, quite extraordinary. Always shows up on the leaderboards for these big series and plays all the games. He's a phenomenal player. He's going to check here, having opened with Big Lick and checked this Broadway flop. Doesn't necessarily mean he's given up, of course. Ben CB, as we've already seen, is a player who doesn't need a second invitation to walk through an open door. And it turns out it does mean that DJK had given up, didn't want to bluff at that super connected board. Ben CB will take one down. Seven high beats nine high. Who knew? DJK will try and get some of it back here with the bullets, the rockets, the American Airlines, the two aces, two wands, snake eyes. I don't, I, I'm out. 70,000 to go, and this is not great for soft cord. And uh, it's going to get a lot worse now. Not that there's uh, anything particularly unusual about that play, shoving over DJK's opening raise with the tens with about uh, 22 big blinds. Boom, all over the 35 times table. We're gonna wait for the other players to get out of the way here, I think, before DJK makes the easiest decision in No Limit Hold'em, calling an all-in with the best hand we have available. And Softcord is going to need some help to stay in this tournament. I don't think the other players will be too happy about this hand either. They don't want DJK getting his hand on a big stack. 1.6 million. As you see, the players starting with almost the same amount of chips in this one. And there's a 10. My word, a huge card for Softcord. The full house comes on the turn. DJK down to just a couple of outs on the river. He makes a Broadway straight, but it's no good. Softcourt is going to eliminate Dan Kelly after he gets it in good. He's going to have to wait for that third scoop title. Amazing the number of final table appearances he has in these big tournaments. And I'm sure it won't be long before he has another. But for now, we'll have to settle for eighth spot. Dan Kelly out with a $41,945 prize. Should mention, by the way, first prize in this tournament. We're going to go up the uh, pretty significant money jumps as we eliminate players. But first prize is $343,000, over a third of a million dollars. Pretty significant money, isn't it? Raz A86 with the two eights, UTG. He's going to make it slightly more than double the big blind, just for variation. Soft cord with ace-queen suited, and a similar stack to Raz A. Both of them around about the 30, low 30s big blinds. And he will just flat call. I don't think it would be too much of a surprise to see a 3-bet or a flat call there. Alex will fold, and Zeratika has the 6-9, but he will also fold. So these two will go to the flop. Plenty of chips behind for this one to get interesting, especially now. Wow, what a cooler this is. Raze 86 flops middle set, soft cord flops, an absolute monster top pair and a nut flush draw. And there really aren't too many occasions that you'll flop that and only have 29% equity. Really unlucky for whoever loses this hand because, you know, all of these players, very aggressive, very creative. So when uh, one of them flops something and the other one flops something, very hard to get away from it. Raz A will lead out for 92 into 258. Soft cord will just flat call. So 
maybe just allowing Raze to continue to bluff if he is bluffing. We can obviously see that he isn't, but so of course thinking, well, if I raise, I'm just not going to get a ton of value. What line does Raz A take here to try and get paid? What line would you take with a set in this spot? Of course, he'd love to get all the money in, but how does he go about that? He's going to decide to check here. And a horrible spot for soft cord. Doesn't look like a horrible spot from his situation, but he decides to check. Fascinating stuff. Obviously didn't want to face a check raise, and, uh, well, it's worked out beautifully for him, hasn't it? <laughs> Not playing results, but on that occasion, that check is going to make him some money. Nut flush for soft cord. The unlucky set of eights for Raz A86. However, he's not going to... Uh, give away a ton of money that hand could have gone very differently couldn't it if soft cord had decided to play his hand faster we could have had a really big pot as it is raz a dodges a bullet there flops the set gets unlucky but comes out of it with 1.1 million which is almost 30 bigs so absolutely fine to fight another day soft cord with pocket tens his lucky hand in this tournament flopped a set to eliminate djk123 And no thing clue 11, who's going to be no clue from now on. Yeah, we've all had our fun with your hilarious screen names. Where it reflects poorly on you. Not me. All right? Have a little word with yourself. But congratulations on making a scoop final table. Terrific. Alex987 will flat with the nines here. Saw him three bet those nines on the first hand we watched. Now, this is really interesting because Turatika is going to shove... Fancies this as a little bit of a squeeze spot. Thinks he might have some fold equity here. Also has a half-decent hand, of course, and these two are probably reasonably active in front of him. Now, what do you do in Softcore's position? Softcore decides to fold. Alex987 is going to call, and Softcore's going to see that he actually had the best hand. Tough for him, though, with Alex behind. You could have smooth call with a big hand. And, uh, you know, if you're in soft cord shoes, that nine's actually quite a nice one. Horrible one if you're in Turatika's shoes. He was involved in a race. It's his tournament life that's on the line and his tournament life that has ceased to be. Turatika is out in seventh. $59,787 for the finished player. And he leaves us playing six max for the Scoop Event 22 title and $340,000 and change. Kings for soft cord. No clue with the ace jack. I think that's the exact hand that Teratika just went out with, suits and all. Could be wrong, don't have a rewind button, but ace jack's a fickle thing, isn't it? Looks like a strong hand, but so often you can be dominated. No clue's not dominated here. 15 big blinds against a uh, pretty active opener. or well, certainly Softcore looks like an active opener. We can see he's had hands a lot. But the money is in. And Raz A86 sitting quietly in the small blind with a raise and a shove in front of him. An ace king. And in goes the money. Pretty standard stuff this one, isn't it? Just a really big cooler. A big cooler in Softcore's favour. This is the stuff dreams are made of. A big final table. You open with the kings. You get two shoves behind you and you get shown ace jack and ace king. Unbelievable spot for soft cord. 77% of the time he wins a huge pot here and eliminates two players. The rest of the time it goes horribly wrong and he cries sad, sad tears. There we are. <laughs> it looks like it's going to go horribly wrong. I'm only chuckling because of the brutality of this game of poker. Needs to find a king, or Raze86 is going to win this one. None of the players have a club, so Raze wins a really significant pot. He's going to knock out No Clue 11 and double through Soft Cord. He's left with just 700,000. Soft Cord tasted the rainbow there, but had it snatched brutally away from him on the flop. No Clue out in six. The player from Mexico, or playing out of Mexico, wins $78,776. Great result for him.
we're five-handed, and Raz A86 has vaulted up into, well, a share of the chip lead, effectively. Him and longtime chip leader Ben CB in the big blind, in the, excuse me, having open raised in this one. Raz A86 is in the big blind. He's going to defend with the ace queen. A lot of deception in this defense. And another monster flop. I tell you what, you want to play ace queen suited, write that down. Very often it looks like you're going to get top pair and then up flush draw. <laughs> if only that happened more often, life be nice. Well, this may not turn into too big of a pot, not least because Ben CB doesn't have too much, but also these are the two chip leaders. Ben CB with middle pair decides to check it back. I'm sure Raz A86 will know that that quite often means he actually has something here, something with showdown value or a medium to weak strength hand that he just doesn't want to get blown off. Raz A86 again checking, playing this very trappily. Ben CB also will check. And Raz A86 will make the nut flush on the river. Not that he needed it. I was already ahead in this one. I mean, his opponent has checked twice, so I'm sure he feels like his chances of getting paid aren't that great. You've got to try, right? And he will try to the tune of 125,000. Imagine Ben will be calling here. No, he does fold. Wow. Well, every bet counts. And that was kind of a little bit of a soul read from Ben CB. Nice fold. Raz A86 is your chip leader, up to almost 3.3 million. Danish player Rasmus Agasgoff who, as I said earlier, a Sunday million winner, huge amounts of really impressive levels of caches, top, top tournament player he is, and looking to win his first scoop. Playing 25,000, 50,000 now. So Softcord, who opens here out of a million stack, has 20 bigs left. Piku Humper, much shorter stack than that, and in it goes with Ace-King suited. Delighted to find a hand that big with some action in front of him. Softcore will have the decision here. It's going to cost him 550,000 to call into 830, but with a bad ace, he doesn't want to get involved. And Piku Humper, he's an excellent player in his own right, won the Super Tuesday earlier this year for a six-figure score, trying to get back into this one. Hand 174, and we still have five players left. This did turn into a really long final table, but then they often do in the scoops. The structures are just phenomenal. I know I do bang on about that, but... Unless you've actually played one. If you have played one, you'll violently agree with me. If you haven't played one, I would encourage you to jump in. But, you know, make sure you set aside enough time. Anticipate success. Because if you do have success, it's going to take a while. Piku Humper with about 11 big blinds. Shoving from the small blind. It's got to be a pretty standard shove. This one with Raz A86 opening a lot of hands on the button. And Raz A will call roughly a 60-40 shot. Maybe a little bit closer than that. And Raz 86 catches on the flop. Piku Humper is the all-in player. It's going to need some help here. Well, that helps a little bit. Catches an eight on the turn, but needs even more help to survive. And a seven of clubs isn't going to get it done. So a little bit unlucky. But Piku Humper had been short stacked for a while. Raz 86 takes it down, knocks out another player. Piku Humper finishes in fifth for $97,000, leaving these four players playing for the title and that top prize of $343,000. Now, Softcord, the short stack, would chip up at the expense of uh, Alex987 a little bit. Raza86, still your chip leader, but these four players would do a deal. You can understand why. Huge sums of money at stake. And uh, I'll confirm their individual payouts when they get eliminated in the traditional fashion. And we have done a four-way chop. And Softcord on 1.1 million, less than 20 big blinds, is the man who needs to get back into this. Thinking about this ace-deuce, I didn't quite get it out in time. He may well just shove here because he doesn't want to get three bet and then have a, an odd decision. Alex987 is the one with the decision here. Pocket eights. And this will be a call for... Just under half his stack. 
So it's not a trivial call by any means. He did have a little think about it. I think he was always going to make it. The money's gone in. Raza 86 will fold. And Sofka will be at risk here. Alex 9087 has him slightly locked up, but no more. What a flop for Sofka, my word. Why not turn the ace as well, just for uh, just for completeness? And another one. He's just showing off now. It's embarrassing. Soft cord with the uh, three aces, three twos, a full house, twos full of aces, and a full house, aces full of twos. Pretty impressive. He's won that pot four times. You saved them up, really. You've blown it there on your on your one time. He, he actually does get his one time. Soft cord now up to 2.2 million. Alex987 not finding that too amusing, I'm sure, with the pocket eights. That was a big portion of his stack. They've kind of flipped places, those two players, and he's now the short stack. Ben CB, who hasn't been the short stack all final table, although has seen his initial chip lead eroded sort of in the pack right now, opens jacks here. Soft cord will three bet with the king nine. And Ben CB has, uh, well, he started the hand with two million, which is around about the sort of 33 big blind mark. What do you do with pocket jacks here? Just put the money in. Or a little four bet. Is that a little four bet to induce soft core to do something rash? Just to give the appearance of fold equity. Well, it's a brilliant move because it has induced something rash. Soft core decides to jam with king nine. And that little teaser four bet on the button from Ben CB gets his money in really good here. Nine of uh, soft core's hand now paired with the board. So a couple more outs. Ben CB looking good, though, just needs to fade the river. And Six of Hearts confirms it. So a really nice little bit of bet sizing from Ben CB. Gets Softcore to uh, go off on that hand. And, well, that's a really costly mistake from Softcore. I mean, it's easy to play results, isn't it? It looks like a mistake now. But, of course, the problem for him is that Ben CB well capable of making that full bet as a bluff. Softcore crippled by the hand, though down to just uh, two big blinds behind. Raze 86, opening hand 2.10 here. Soft cord with, well, you never want to be here, do you? Two big blinds. Do I put them in now with 9.3 with some money in the middle? Do I wait another hand? He does decide to just put the money in. The other two players will almost certainly be calling here. And soft cord's got a chance to triple up. The world's not over yet. 20% of the time he does do exactly that. And if he does triple up, he'll have nine big blinds. One more double up. Happy days. Doesn't look too good on that flop, does it? Raze86, who had the best hand anyway, now has a pair of eights. And this is obviously betting on the side, so Raze's bet signifying to Ben CB that he has flopped something here or he does hold something. Very little point in him betting otherwise into a dry side pot. Ben CB's flopped a gut shot here and he says, do you know what, I'm going to see another card just in case I hit it, just in case I can make some serious money out of Raz A. Seven of Diamonds gives Ben a pair but uh, not enough to be winning the hand. Raze will check. Soft cord has turned a flush draw and a gut shot as well here. Three of spades. Well, he'll be watching from the sidelines, not being able to see the other hand, thinking, is that enough? Have these two got no pair? Come on the threes. Sadly, no good for him. Ben CB's betting here, which I guess is slightly surprising. Betting 660 and actually puts Raz A in a bit of a weird spot with the ace eight. It's one of those, it's going to be a slightly annoying one for him if he folds, and he does fold. So Ben CB 789, tough to say whether that was a value bet or a bluff at the end. But uh, it worked out incredibly well for him. Got Raz A86 off a better hand. And we lose soft cord in fourth spot. The Swedish player takes home $181,000 after the four-way deal. 
Leaves us three-handed, playing for the scoop title. 30,000, 60,000 blinds. Alex987, now the short stack with a little bit less than 20 bigs. And Raz A86 and Ben CB rocking the big stacks in this one. Obviously, nowhere near over for Alex987. Has a stack that can still put a dent in the other twos. But for now, he'll sit this one out. Ben CB and Raz A will take a flop. And this is an almighty cooler, my word. Ben CB flops the nut straight. Raz A86 flops the second nut straight. This is really horrible for Raz A86. The thing that will save him is that Alex987 has a short stack on the sidelines. And, uh, I mean, these two both play, if you like, the modern style, where they're putting in relatively small bets and not playing too many big pots. So... They may not have got it in anyway because they are pretty deep, but especially with the short stack looking on, they really won't want to go broke here. But such big hands. Ben CB's raise makes this uh, a little bit more likely to be a big pot, of course. The fact that he's not slow playing it really is a nasty, nasty flop for Raze, isn't it? What's he supposed to do? He's got the second nut hand. And... The problem with him slow playing is there's a lot of cards that can come that obviously there's cards that can come that can beat his hand, but also there's cards that can come that can kill his action. So yeah, he does want to get the money in right now. Makes it just over eight hundred thousand. Ben C B sitting there with the nuts thinking well, this is enjoyable. I wonder if we'll put the rest of it in. He also has uh Raz A massively dominated I mean, Ben CB will, if he gets the money here, expect to see stuff like sets and two pair and big flush draws. None of that. Raz A, 86. You've got to feel sorry for him. He's been really cooled off here. He's looking for a chop or some kind of miracle out. The four of hearts won't help him. Needs to river a king here or he's done. Two of clubs is not going to get it done for him. Ben CB takes down a monster pot. Raz A, 86. Our thoughts go out to him, my word. What a horrible hand to happen three-handed. And who's jumping around his room right now? Alex987 has vaulted to the heads up. Looking on was cheering the other two players on as they got their money in. Raz A86, a great tournament player. Rasmus Agasgov wins a, well, a ton of money. $257,000 after the chop. And I'm sure we'll see him at a big final table again soon. Top, top player he is. He leads these two heads up with Ben CB. Holding a huge advantage here against Alex987. Ben CB checking back with top pair. He's definitely shown us that he can really vary his game, hasn't he? Sometimes playing fast, sometimes uh, playing deceptively as he is here. Alex987 has uh, a straight draw, but not too much else. He bets, Ben CB calls, and Alex hits the straight draw. Does bring the spade flush for Ben CB, so... Well, Alex has 900,000 left. There's 360,000 in the middle. Can he get away from this one? He goes for a pretty sturdy value bet. And Ben CB must love life. What must it be like to be with the big stack at the final table of a high scoop event and everybody just keeps trying to give you money when you're sitting there with the nuts? Or the virtual nuts, at least, only beaten by a straight flush. He does go ahead and set Alex987 all in. Alex987 with the straight. If he calls here, this one is over. Really tough for him against an aggressive opponent who could easily be bullying him here. But he does make the fold. Wow, keeping his cool under that kind of pressure. So, so easy to think, well, I'm heads up. I've got second locked up. We've done a deal. I might as well just call and see if I'm winning or not. Alex987 thinking that one through and making an impressive lay down. As you'd expect, we've seen some really top quality poker at this final table. And uh, it could be over pretty soon. Alex987 needs a lot of help, doesn't he? Massively out chip. But this could be the start of the comeback. Gets it in good here. 5347, pretty close. But he does have the slight edge. However, Alex, of course, the all in player. If that ace doesn't hold up. And it may well not do. Ben CB flops a queen. If uh, queens and nines holds, we've got a champion. Alex987 needs to catch an ace on the river to keep this going. And he can't get it done. 
Ben CB789 ends up steamrolling the last few players to take this one down. A fantastic performance and result from him. He adds $243,000 and a scoop title to the $90,000 he won on the opening day. He is loving scoop 2014. Looks like a really top, top player. And uh, he now has a scoop title to confirm that fact. $243,000 for him. Alex 97 with 232. Raze 86 had the most chips when they made the deal. And he takes the most money out of the tournament. As you'd expect from a scoop high buy-in event. Really high quality stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. Lots more scoops still to come as we all play for a share of that $40 million guaranteed. Keep it right here on PokerStars.tv. For everyone here, I'm Nick Wealth. We'll take big care.